when it comes to trauma triage, start date 2265. Spock really summarized trauma triage best, whereas he reminds us... Where are you in your mind? Logic clearly dictates that the needs of the many outweigh the needs of the few. So, when you play with most trauma triage systems, to no surprise, being the worst makes you first. Meaning, if you're the worst of the worst, you're a red. And with most of the triage systems out there, before you get busy taking care of all of these seriously sick people, just simply remember that if they can... <laughs> Then, to no surprise, you are a green. And everybody else is a red, a yellow, or a black. Now, when it comes specifically to the idea of triage, this actually came into play during the time of Napoleon back in 1792. However, specifically for most of us in medical triage and current EMS, we really were first introduced to this idea back in 1983, whereas in 83, we had START. And when you play with START, many of us were taught the whole idea of RPM, 30 and 2, can do. And what that actually means on the big people's side for start is R is respirations. If you're breathing more than 30, you're a red. P is perfusion, meaning if your cap refill is more than two seconds or you don't have a radio pulse, simple, you're a red. And M is mentation, meaning if you can't do what I tell you to do, you are a red. However, taking that one step further, specifically for start, what about declaring people dead? With that in mind, to no surprise, you first go ahead and open up their airway. And start is actually reasonably simple. Once you've opened up their airway, if they decide to breathe, great, they're a red. If they are not breathing, then they have literally declared themselves as being dead. So that is red and dead, and for everybody else, you're a green or a yellow. Now the difference is, starting to remember was for big people, but what about the children? Well, that's where, as in 1995, Dr. Lou Romig introduced the idea of Jumpstart. <laughs> So the difference is start is for big people, jump start is for little people, and you still get the RPM. But a couple differences. Number one, to no surprise, kids tend to breathe a little faster, so they played with that number. Number two, for perfusion, especially when you're cold, capillary refill cannot be the most accurate when it comes to kids that are cold. And therefore, they just say, do you have a pulse somewhere? And for M, meaning mentation, kids never do what you tell them to do. So that can make life a little bit more challenging. So with that in mind, number one, if they can't walk this way, but they should be able to walk this way, at least they are a yellow. And number two, if they're not neurologically normal for whatever reason, they're at least a yellow. But you don't hit red until P-U, meaning you are posturing or you are unresponsive. And in Jumpstart, that is when you jump to becoming a red. Now, specifically for children with Jumpstart and looking at declaring kids dead on scene, Again, you open their airway, just like with START, the big difference is everything in kids is respiratory. 
So we give them a couple breaths, and if they decide to breathe, that's wonderful, they're a red. And after a couple of breaths, regrettably, if they're still not breathing, they have declared themselves dead. Now, number three came in 2008, and that is when we were introduced to salt. to start versus salt. They are remarkably similar. The big difference is, is number one, they put both peas and big people into one tool. The other big difference is that with salt, you not only triage, but it actually covers some of the emergency treatments as well. Meaning, if you have somebody that's missing a limb, throw in a tourniquet. If they've got the mother of all pneumos, you stick a needle in their chest. Or if they've been exposed to something really icky, you can give them your chemical antidotes as well. And when we look at declaring people dead with salt, again, just like with the other ones, you open their airway first. And on the adult side, if they're not breathing, well, they're dead. And for children, just like with Jumpstart, you give them a couple of breaths and they decide if they're going to be a red or dead. Now, the latest new kid on the block when it came to trauma triage is described as RAMP. And RAMP is currently only used for most places in adults and predominantly in the military. But when it comes to RAMP, really what this comes down to is, number one, do you have a radial pulse? Yes or no? Number two, can you follow commands? Because think about it, they're soldiers. They're used to say, yes, drill sergeant. And if you have a radial pulse and you follow commands, great. That's the only two things they look for. And it's just yes or no. Because with that in mind, check this out. If you appear to be dead or nearly dead, just like the other ones, they open your airway first. And if you don't follow commands, you don't have a radial pulse, you are dead, or you are soon to be dead. So when it comes to mass casualty triage. If you're like many people, myself included, and we had a situation that looks like this, whereas you literally roll on scene and have bodies everywhere. And then you try to remember what they taught you in school, which is some variation of something that looks like this. And when you try to put those things together in real life, you know what? You're like, there's got to be a better way. And whether it's for Pete's medical, Pete's trauma, or specifically for mass calves, practice makes perfect. Or when it comes to all things pediatrics, our motto is called proper planning prevents piss poor pediatrics. Yeah.